everyone. We are We Knew the Moon, and I'm here with Tracy. Hi, Tracy. Hi, Day. Today, we're going to take you through New Moon in Taurus, and Tracy's going to guide us through a little exercise to help us make use of the energies of this New Moon in Taurus to the most and to the maximum. So, I'm really excited about that. What you need to do for this session is get yourself comfy. Get your favorite notebook, something to take notes on, get yourself some cup of tea or glass of wine, whatever makes you feel comfortable and happy and relaxed. Get your candles burning or your oils burning. Make sure you get your crystals. I've got some suggestions for both now, but they are just suggestions. They are ones that are very useful or handy to have at this time of the moon and of the year. If you feel guided towards something else, then please just use that too. These are just suggestions. We've got four aromas and we call them, as always, I always explain that we call them aromas because you might use them in different ways. You might use them in candles, bath bombs, oils, but you might also use them in your cooking or in teas, or you might get the actual plants in your life somehow. So we start off with honeysuckle. How nice would a honeysuckle plant be? Patchouli, rose, ylang-ylang, and rosemary. So if you've got any of those and you feel inclined to burn them, or if you've got them in a candle or something, then please go ahead and use them. And then the crystals that you might want to grab, jade, jet, and rainbow hematite. So if you need to get yourself settled, or if you need to collect your bits and bobs, then pause us and come back to us. But now I'm going to hand over to Tracy to start our guided meditation. Thanks, Dee. I'm excited. It's new moon in Taurus time. You love it, don't you? Don't you, my little Taurus baby? I do. I think it's one of the signs I get because I am a Taurian. And it's new moon, which is about fresh starts. It's the start of the lunar cycle. And today we are going to be focusing on the home, which as a Taurian is one of my favourite things. Mm -hmm. So I want to just explain a little bit about what the sign of Taurus is so we get an understanding of this practice today. And it's a bit of an odd one. Just before this podcast, Dee said, are we doing a meditation today? Are we doing a journal exercise? And I can't really describe it. It's a bit of everything. Um, We're going to be going through our space and doing a little bit of an assessment and a gratitude exercise as well, all based around our home and environment, which as a Taurus, it's earth sign. It's very grounded. It's very practical very stable the home and the environment that you're in is really important and this new main energy whether you're a Taurus an earth sign air water whatever you are you can really use some of this energy to make sure that you're getting the right environment so you can reach your full potential so I'm going to describe my home which is the home of a Taurus to hopefully give you some idea of, for me, what a balanced environment means, what I need as a Taurus. I just really want to get over and across how important environment is and what you can incorporate in. Our home tells us so much about ourselves. And I'm sure we've all done it, that we go into someone else's house and maybe not even consciously, maybe it's a subconscious thing. You have a little look around and you can tell so much about a person. I don't have to be in their house to start looking around and nosing around their home. You know, when you walk down the street and you can see into people's living rooms, I'm so guilty of looking into their living rooms. No matter what your sign, no matter what your personality, no matter where you are in your life, your space is part of you. But it's important that you make your space to its best potential to make the best version of you, right? And that's what we're going to use this new moon energy for. So I'm not talking about getting the duster out the cupboard and the hoover and having a massive spring clean. But we are going to be reflecting on our space and hopefully finding ways that we can improve it. And looking for things that we didn't notice before and showing gratitude for our homes. Or this doesn't even have to be a home, this can be your work environment as well. So to describe my house, Dee, how would you describe it? You've been in, how would you say my space is? Oh, well, for me, it's like dream home because you have two dogs (laughs) (laughs) Um, and you've just designed it so cute. And it's one of those homes where everywhere you look, there's something cute and interesting to look at because you've got really sweet wallpaper and you've got lots of like lovely candles and artwork on the walls. You know, it's just you've made it really, really cozy in a very stylistic, creative way. Oh, thank you, Dee. That's That's really nice. I was hoping you wouldn't say a shit pit with mud on the carpet. (laughs) So as a Taurus, and this is just 
going on intuition. This isn't me thinking, well, I must have this or this is stuff I like. I surround myself with things that I love. So I have a lot of plants in my house. It's very important to me. I have a lot of light when we moved in. It's really important. I'm right opposite a park and the trees feel like they're coming in my living room and all of the ceilings are high. It's an old building, but it's each room is light. Light and air is really important to me. I have a lot of crystals dotted around, as you probably guessed, but not in a cluttered way. And every item that I choose is thought out and loved and placed with intention in a style that makes it not too Ikea-like, but that it's neat and tidy. I need organised but not in a neat freak way. It needs to feel like a home. You're going to have to share pictures of your house now. You know that. We'll we'll drop them in the Facebook group. Maybe we can all share pictures of our house and and how we feel like it reflects us. Yeah, and getting ideas from others. I really like to bring in other people's artwork, things that people have made, objects that have stories, really important to me that my house isn't too minimal but it isn't too cluttered and with that also one thing I like to bring in is a lot of colour I like to incorporate colour into each room so hopefully that gives you an idea of how you can balance your home and how a home of a Torian looks today I want us to find a space that we'd like to analyse for ourselves could be your living room could be your bedroom could be your office it could be your workspace go to that space grab your crystals and aromas that Tia suggested for you today or perhaps something else is calling out for you pause me and when you're ready we can begin our reflection exercise and showing gratitude for the space and environment that we have okay perfect so hopefully you're in your chosen space I want you to find a cosy, comfortable space to sit in your environment. Maybe on a chair, maybe on the floor, maybe on a nice cushion. Hopefully your chosen area today as well is somewhere that you can just be at peace for a moment. So away from distraction, away from too much noise. And when you're ready, I'd like you to just slowly close your eyes. And as always, we like to just pause a moment before we start on our reflection journey. Take a deep breath in through the nose. And out through the mouth. In through the nose and out through the mouth. So we just relax into the natural rhythm of our body. There's no forced breath here. There's no forced posture. So we can just pause and be in the environment that surrounds us. Note and feel the air that surrounds us. Maybe there's some smells or sounds that you hear. Note if you're warm. If you're cold, you might feel a slight chill. Note how you're feeling physically. And just be for this moment. Absorb and feel your surroundings. Let's acknowledge this space.
And when you're ready, slowly open your eyes. Let your eyes focus in the room that you are. Just to the light. And slowly scan the room around you. Starting from your left. Turn your head. And slowly move across the room. Taking in all of your surroundings. All of your beautiful items and things. Note the ceiling above you and the floor below. And you might be sitting on a nice, soft, comfy carpet on a beautiful wooden floor. This is your space. And as we absorb our surroundings, let's just take a moment to have gratitude on the space that we're in. And when you're ready, I'd now I'd like you to go for a little wander. So slowly stand up from your seated position. And let's take a slow walk around the room that we're in. I like to start from left to right, but really just go to the space that calls to you. Look at all the things that surround you. Take note of what's in the room. And slowly move around the area, taking in all your beautiful items. You might want to pause on something. You might want to pick it up. Maybe an item triggers a memory for you. Or maybe you notice something that you forgot you had or that you've not paused to spend time with before. You may want to grab an item and move it to another area. You may find yourself just focused on a point for a while as it triggers something for you. Let's be mindful. And let's take our time to just happily wander around our space and be. And after you've wandered around your space, pause me if you need more time. Let's pause and sit again. And let's grab our journal. And let's write the following phrase. I am grateful for. And fill in the blank. Hopefully something clearly has come to mind now you've taken the time to spend time in your environment and reflect on what it means to you. I am grateful for. Perfect. Hopefully you've come up with something lovely that showed gratitude for the space that you're in. Dee, did you find anything in your space that you had? To, I saw you go for a little wonder. I did go for a little wonder. I'm sitting in my office. So I wrote, I am grateful for my awesome office space and the possibilities it gives to me. Oh, that's so nice. And Dee is an Aries, which is a sign of ambition and drive and office and work environment. Doesn't surprise me that that is your space and your important area that you spend a lot of time in. Grab whatever you've written you're grateful for, everyone. 
stick it to your fridge, have it typed up on your phone. Post it on our, um, in our Facebook group. Yes, yeah, share, share your journey to, with us today of what you're grateful for. Dee, did you find any items that you picked up and moved or anything that you'd noted that you hadn't seen in a while? I made a note of a few things because there's a few things I, I want to get rid of. Now, this was the thing that I thought might trigger for people, and I do this as a Torian. It's very unlikely that you're going to be 100% happy with your space. There's going to be something that you want to move, change, add, clean, decorate, improve. Now is the perfect time to do it. If there was ever a time to move your furniture around, change a wall, maybe add some colour, paint it, move your ornaments around, have a good sprinkling, have a dust, make your space even better for you. New moon in Taurus is your time. So grabbing your pen and paper again, I want us to write down how we can make improvements to our space. Dee loves a list to do, so I want you to write it down now so it's out of your head and on the paper so we don't have to stress about it. This month, New moon in Taurus, the sign of earth, the sign of practicality and stability and environment. Let's have a little note of what can we do to improve our space that's important to us. And if you're struggling to find why or how you can improve it, if you're 100% happy with it, then don't feel you need to. But maybe have a little think of what parts of this space are you not feeling right now? Is there a certain corner that needs a tidy? Is there a certain wall that needs decorating? Does it just need a clean? How can you improve on this space? Have a little think and maybe write down, I am not feeling this space because. And this isn't applicable to everyone. You may love your space. I want this to be a gratitude exercise of positivity where you appreciate your space. But there's also maybe it's applicable to some of you. I am not feeling this space or this area because. And again, note and journal if there's anything that you want to change. just a few other points to note that may have popped up because I really want us to journal today what came up for us in this exercise today Um, and it's not a regimented list and it's very hard to make an exercise of journaling that's applicable to everyone because this space could be your workspace it could be your bedroom it could be your garden you could be sharing a room in a house somewhere that you have intentions to maybe have your own house one day it could be your car it could be anywhere so it's not don't feel you have to answer all of these But another thing I wanted us to just reflect on when you were wandering around your space and you're picking up items, perhaps you had some sort of echoes of the happy times you shared in this space with people or happy moments. Make a list now of any happy memories that popped up for you there that you had in this space. So hopefully you have some happy echoes, some happy memories that were triggered there for you in this exercise, which you can note down today as well. And finally, one last thing that might have popped up for you is what this space provides. Maybe it is a space that doesn't have many memories and maybe it's a space that doesn't have much room for change, but your space provides something for you. The core things we need as a human, warmth, shelter, We take for granted, but our environments offer these to us. So let's take time to just reflect and show gratitude for our basic needs of survival of what our space, our homes, our work, our office provides for us. Let's make a list of what this space provides for us during this exercise. Just going to give you a few more moments to jot down any other notes that came up for you there.
finally, D. You like this. I, I did the punchy catchphrase. My top 10 Korean tips for creating a space. Just some ideas of how you can make your space improved if you're struggling for a bit of inspiration. So first of all, open your windows, get some air in. Even if it's winter, I love to open my windows to make sure that fresh air is coming in. Even if it's just for an hour or a day, stagnant air, smelly cooking air, even burning incense, as lovely as it is, it can become stagnant. So get some fresh air in and get rid of the old. Get plants. Even if you're not a gardener or green fingered, there are loads of house plants which are so easy to care for. None of this Monty Don of, you know, ferns where you have to blitz them with distilled water at a certain temperature at a certain time of day. Dot crystals around. The suggested crystals today, Dee will go through in a second, but also just go through your crystal box and have a little play around and dot them around where you feel places need a bit more energy or maybe your room has a little bit too much energy use your crystal healing and your knowledge and again we'll add some suggestions to the website to get that really lovely balanced energy in a home dust i don't mind cleaning i am a bit of a moniker from friends i really quite like it but i know that it's not one of those exercises that we all enjoy but my goodness if you just move your bits and pieces around and have a dust getting rid of all that dirt will make your room just feel so much better and when you put the stuff back even if you put it back in the same space it's just the room has a different vibrancy and energy so have a little clean also move a piece of furniture or an ornament around so rearrange your ornaments if you can rearrange your furniture it just adds a new spring fresh energy to a room smudge Get your incense burning, wave it around, have a little smudge of a room, especially after arguments or conflict. Or again, if you just need to boost the energy and get rid of some negativity, white sage. We sell these incense sticks on our website, actually. So check out We Need the Moon, our shop. We have all different ones. The favorite is white sage and Palo Santo, which is great for cleansing and clearing and healing. Essential oil sprays. You can find these. I'm starting to sell these in my shop for yoga, but there are so many different essential oil sprays for different balancing practices. You can have energizing ones, relaxing ones, soothing ones, grounding ones, focusing ones. So many lovely blends out there and they really work as well. So if you're feeling you're needing something, perhaps the bedroom needs a bit more of a chilled out vibe, spray some lavender around. Make your own as well. We will hopefully come up with some suggested recipes soon for you. Can't recommend these enough. Essential oils are proven to work and they are a lovely way of not only fragrance in your house, but adding some holistic properties too. Change rooms. It's hard to work from home, live and sleep in the same place. So make sure you are spending time in other rooms as well. Spending too much time in one place is going to make it stagnant in your energy, in the room's energy. Make sure you're not spending all your time just in one space. No matter how cosy, comforting or secure you feel, keep moving. It makes you appreciate your favourite space even more when you come back. Bring in some colour as well to your space. It doesn't have to be bright yellows or pinks. Don't overdo it, but just dot some colour around. We talk about colour therapy in some of our podcast episodes on chakras and crystal healing. It's scientifically proven to work as well, these colour healing therapies and incorporating colour into a room, whether it again is yellow for vibrancy and energy, maybe lavender colours for soothing and love. It adds a lot. Dot a little bit of colour somewhere as a point of focus in the room and it really can improve a space for you and just add a little bit more of a different energy if it's needed. And finally, declutter. Now, I'm not one for lots of belongings, but I do like my important bits. And what I do do is I alternate my stuff. So the bits that are there have their spot, and they have their place in the limelight for a while. And then through the seasons, I put it in a box and I get my new stuff down. 
because I think too much clutter in a space not only doesn't give your important valuables their space to shine, but it can really affect your energy and causes distraction. You see these films and these TV programs of hoarders, don't you? And mm. they're not in a good place. Valuables and trinkets and things are lovely to have, but too many of them when you can't have room to put your cup of tea down or work properly. It's very hard to have a calm mind if you're not in a calm space. That's exactly it. Yeah, I like that day. So declutter mm. where you can. We have a worksheet to download for you with lots more tips. These ones and many more of what you can do. And it's an interactive one as well. So you can download it, print it off and do a little checklist of what you want to do with your space and what you don't feel is appropriate to you. Such a personal thing, really, depending Mm. on your personality and tastes and maybe how you've been brought up. We're all different. But it doesn't mean that we can't make a lovely space to practice new moon in and then keep up these practices throughout the year and do the same again next year. Anything we've missed off that list, any tips, tricks, advice that you find is good to improve your space, please let us know. Dee's got a worksheet to go through as well. There's more, lots to do on this new moon, isn't there? (laughs) It's a good one. So again, it's downloadable if you haven't already. So now is a time where you crave balance and stability, but you might not get it. So practice grounding yourself so that you're more okay with the unpredictability of life at the moment. Isn't that interesting? Mm. Things to do at this time, work on your self-worth by surrounding yourself with people who make you happy and therefore boost your confidence. I mean, to be honest, we should all be doing that all of the time, right? Definitely, yeah. Affected organs. The organs to take care of during this new moon in Taurus are the neck and the thyroid. Neck is strongly associated with Taurus. There's some people that can tell person's sun sign by their physical appearance. No way. Taurians have chunky necks and very like (laughs) chunky shoulders yeah like the ball you know if you think of the symbol you don't at all saying that we all look like our star sign but Capricorn has got like a mermaid tail (laughs) yes (laughs) we'll have to look into into it more but (laughs) our friend Michelle can do this we need to ask her more about this yeah all right so um we already discussed the aromas but i will go through them a little bit more now for you so honeysuckle again this would be a great one to buy a bouquet of honeysuckle they've been revered for quite a long time all the way back to druid times they symbolize things like fidelity love devotion it also symbolizes faith in the future and happiness and light so what a lovely bouquet to get someone at this time right so nice The next one is patchouli. Really spiritual fragrance, patchouli, isn't it? A lovely one. The Marmite. You love it or you hate it. Yeah, and you probably have some associations of using patchouli to cover up the smell of smoking or whatever. (laughs) But it's a fantastic one. And if you're not too keen on it, you can mix it with, um, with like citrus or floral smells and it really lifts it. I noted here patchouli is good for prosperity. Have you noticed I've gone all witchy-woo-woo with my essential oil Mm. aromas? I got a new book. Oh, is that what happened? (laughs) That's what happened. So we know that essential oils have their physical help. They can help with ailments and emotional stability, but they also have, aromas have a real spiritual vibe to them as well and it's a spiritual vibe I've gone down I've noted loads of different bits so if you want to know what uh, (laughs) fragrance mean I've gone all woo woo it's really good for grounding and balancing isn't it and it has been often used as an antidepressant and anti-inflammatory oil so the next one is rose roses are just lovely aren't they (laughs) can I tell you what I found out this means please this is my favorite and I need more roses in my life roses are linked with love and beauty Mm -hmm. given if you think of valentine's day but they're also linked with angels oh that's the spiritual meaning different colors of roses are meant to symbolize different ones so we're quite familiar with like the red ones meaning love and passion and Pink ones being more a sign of friendship. White ones are meant to be uh, symbolize purity, innocence. Yellow roses mean wisdom and joy. 
do they? I always yeah. thought yellow was a friendship. But wisdom and joy makes more sense when we look at like color therapy. Yeah. So, um, and purple ones or lavender ones mean uh, change for the better. Isn't that cute? Lovely. Um, We've also got ylang ylang on the list. This is a really good mood booster. Mm, Happiness. Yeah. It's It's aphrodisiac as well. It alleviates anxiety. It apparently lowers blood pressure and decreases the heart rate. And the last one is rosemary, which is a really homey smell, isn't it? I mean, you're not going to smell it without thinking of like lovely roasts and mm, roast beef. Grandmother. <laughs> it symbolizes love and memory. In Asia, it's used as a medium for contacting the dead. Doesn't surprise me. Rosemary is quite a witchy mm. herb. It comes up in a lot of spell books. And the Green Witch course that we did, it was one of the main herbs in there as well. The element, as we said already, is earth. So very grounding, dependable, nurturing, practical and stable. If you're playing We Knew the Moon shot bingo, then you might want to take a shot every time I say grounding. (laughs) The tarot suit associated with earth and with new moon in Taurus are the pentacles. So again, dependable, industrious, diligent and material stability. I think material stability sums up Taurus energy, doesn't it? It's not being materialistic. It's just having the comfort of the things that you like and that give you that make you feel comfortable and happy and cozy in your home. Crystals, we talked about them, but I'm just going to tell you about some of the meanings. Jade, jade's a lovely one for prosperity in Asia. It's one of the luckiest stones. That's why you see a lot of jewelry and and ornaments and trinkets and so forth in jade. But it also symbolizes purity or purification. So again, having that cleansing energy in your space. Really funny because I just found my jade under my desk as I was moving my desk during the exercise. Did you? Yeah. Kind of weird. Jet. Jet is another good one. Um, I can't say jet without thinking of the gladiator. Remember. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But jet is a really good one, again, for purifying your energies and also for giving you protection. A lot of the black stones are about protection and repelling negative energies. Mm. So this one is good for protection of your body, heart, mind, and spirit. And then finally, rainbow hematite. So we've talked about hematite a few times. I think this is the first time we've talked about rainbow hematite. And um, it's slightly different because it's got some of the protection elements in it, but it's also about mental function, memory. It helps calm and still the mind and instills deep inner peace. It can also help you with boosting your confidence and your self-worth. So the affirmation, which again can be downloaded, download it, stick it somewhere where you can see it a lot, keep it in your wallet, just make it very available, program it into your phone. This one is amazing. The affirmation for New Moon and Taurus is, no one can resist me. Saying is believing, day. Mm-hmm. Fake it till you make it. No one can resist me. I love that so much. Finally, numerology, number six. So again, when you hear the characteristics of the number six, you'll see very much why it's related to Taurus. And so keep an eye out if these number sixes turn up anywhere. So the number six represents um, harmony. It's loyal, dependable, emotionable sensual, compassionate, but can be intolerant because Torian energy can be a little bit stubborn at times. Can it not? So that's the worksheet. Um, Thanks so much for listening. Enjoy your new moon in Taurus and we'll see you at the next full moon. We're on all the socials. Hopefully you're following us by now, but if not at we.new.the.moon, that's Facebook and Instagram. We're on Twitter as well. We knew the moon one and you can search for us on Pinterest. Yes, we're on all the socials, aren't we? Happy New Moon, everyone. Enjoy your spring clean or whatever plans you've got for New Moon in Taurus. We'll see you soon. Bye.